All right, Contact 7 is here and brings a bunch of new features that we're going to go over today. There's a bunch of things I got to be honest that I wish were in this version and they're not. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I would like to see in future versions. And I'm going to talk about the factory library, the new factory library, factory library 2, and what is in it. I was hoping that that was going to be a completely revamped library. And it's not. It's actually revamped visually. So we have nice graphics for all of the patches in Contact Factory Library now, which is really cool. But as we'll see, most of the patches are the same as they were in Contact Factory Library 1. So we'll see a little bit of what's new in there. There's a great new orchestra that's put in there by Orchestral Tools, which is a company I really love. I'm not going to make a song in this video because Low Heat Beats already did an amazing song with the stuff in Contact 7. So I'll put a link to his video in the description. Let's go have a look at some of the things that are in here. And we're also going to talk about a few little tips that I'd give you for getting the best use out of Contact. And these apply to some of the old versions of Contact as well. I'm not getting paid to make the video, but I do have an affiliate link in the description. So if you want to hit that link, check out Complete 14. Make sure Complete 14 is right for you before you go buy it. So I've got a couple of videos talking about that. And then I've got a bazillion videos talking about expansions and a lot of the things that are in the new version of Complete 14. So really make sure you do your research. I don't want you buying stuff that you don't need. Let's check out Contact 7. So we're going to do a little comparison between the Contact 7 factory library and the Contact 6 factory library or the factory, the original factory library. Before I do that, I want to give you a couple tips of working with Contact. One of them is that, of course, you can use Contact in complete control. I have the complete control keyboard and I love this thing and I love the lights on it. And the only way to get these lights to work is to run Contact inside complete control. So somebody's asking me if you can finally see, you know, key switches if you're just running Contact and you still can't, I don't know if we're ever going to be able to. So we just have to trust that complete control is going to be around for a long time. Now we'll just go back to regular contact and just talk a little bit about things that are new in contact seven. As you see, the interface looks exactly the same. So one thing I was hoping for was just a little bit higher resolution on some of these fonts and stuff like that. And I don't think that's ever going to be possible. And in my opinion, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like they'd have to make a totally different program if they wanted to get things like the fonts to be scalable. So we don't have a scalable interface. We do have this new browser, which is high DPI. So if you look at the wording of Contact 7 on the website, it does say search, filter, and preview across your collection via a new high DPI browser. A revamped high DPI factory library features new instruments from uh, blah, blah, blah. So we have some high DPI stuff in here in terms of the browser and in terms of the look or the user interface of the new instruments. But that doesn't mean that these new instruments are scalable. So that's still the case. If you load up something, let's go to acoustic and check out a flute in the new version. And as you see, it is a really beautiful new interface, nice and big, kind of looks like a lot of the Play Series instruments. If I put it on my, my Mac Pro down on my MacBook Pro, you can see how big it is. So I really am loving the look of the factory library patches. They look beautiful. If you don't want to see this browser, then this is all you need to look at. And it's great. It's a really nice experience. They've got some new stuff we'll look at in terms of functionality and usability here. Another thing that you should know about Contact, one thing I always see people doing is they'll load up another instrument here in Contact and it instantly pops up down at the bottom. And that's because Contact was originally set up to be a multi timbral virtual instrument. And that means you could have a whole bunch of instruments running inside one instance of contact and you'd kind of save some resources, I guess. And that was actually how we used to work back in the day. And you'd configure multiple outputs with contact and stuff like this. Nowadays with our instruments, it's just easier to make an instrument track in your program and just have one instrument in it. And so in order to get this functionality off, which is super annoying because it loads up the next patch on a different MIDI channel, which you can also change, by the way, you can set it to Omni. And we'll talk about that in a second. There's a really simple solution for that. It's just to turn off this rack view. Single instrument, we kind of lose our browser, but that's okay because we can now use the new file browser. So I can click over to the new file browser and here is our sort of scalable browser, which, which looks really nice. We can, you know, browse by characteristics, which is brilliant. 
And within Contact 7, if you click on this Contact folder, you're going to get the new Factory Library too. So if I look over on the right-hand side, we can see the banks from Contact Factory Library 2, and then we can load our patches right from here. So if I click on Acoustic, I can now click a preview, and then if I double click, now I can play it. So that's probably the method I would use for browsing patches in Contact now. It's a little bit different than the way we used to use it with this browser over on the left-hand side, but because we've got previews in this browser, it's still going to work nicely. And one thing you can do is you can hit this little pin button right here, and that's going to keep the browser open when you double click on a patch. So not only can you get a little preview, you can actually double click it and play it. So this seems much more useful to me when I'm looking for patches. One thing you can do is in the settings, go over to handling and change this MIDI channel assignment for loaded patches to Omni. Before what it would do is just go to the first free channel and that's why you go from channel one to channel two to channel three if you accidentally loaded more patches. If you set it to Omni, it's just gonna respond to MIDI on any channel. And the main reason I would I would recommend this is because if I'm using a drum map in Cubase, it defaults to channel 10. Now I'm not going to have to change the channel in contact right here every time I load a drum patch and I want to use the drum map in Cubase. So really useful little setting for you to change in, uh, in contact on any version of contact. So let's look at the differences in the factory library and maybe some of the new stuff. When I started going through these patches, I was hoping to see, you know, completely new saxophones in the band and completely new basses and stuff like that. And, and it's not. As, let's just try a couple out. So we'll go to band and just give you an example of what has changed. Or right, let's go to upright bass. That's looking pretty old. Really nice upright bass. I've used this one a lot of times in productions. Here's the upright bass in Contact 7. We hear that it's the exact same samples with mostly the same controls and really beautiful design with these graphics. I absolutely love it, but some of these controls are going to get pretty tiny on high resolution screens. So let me know what you guys think about the new look of it. So we've got the same buttons. We can turn on the solo. We've got a, a compressor right here. And if we click on effects, we've got things like EQ, tape, delay chorus, phaser cabinet, convolution, and a limiter. And then we can also click on this little button right here and we can go in and change some of the things like velocity response. And this one, we can see that we can adjust velocity and pitch bend range and stuff like that as well. But uh, it's just a little bit cleaner interface. And this to me does look like a good usage of space. So where the main page maybe could have bigger knobs and it's used for these fancy graphics, they are using most of the space for the uh, sort of more fine tuning settings of your instrument. So that is a nice addition for sure. If we go to guitars, you can see that we have some new guitars in here. So let's try some of these new patches out. We got acoustic fingered. Let's go to like a concert hall and see what that sounds like. Yeah, so it looks like the, it's these new acoustic ones at the top and that's about it. Let's try acoustic strummed. So we're getting a little bit more pattern-based stuff in the new Contact 7 as well. And we'll see that in some of the other instruments in a second. You know what, this baritone saxophone actually sounds pretty decent. Ooh, harmonize, what's this? And then we can do a fifth. And I'll set it to C minor. So now if I set it to C minor, it's not letting me play outside of the key of C minor. So if I play an E, it's actually putting it up to an F. So there's E and F. So I could literally play any notes on the keyboard right now. It's going to automatically put it to the key of C minor. That's pretty cool. So if you're not a musician, this could be kind of uh, helpful, I guess. So if you look at choir, it looks like we've got some new stuff as well. We've got a new category. And I think this one's taken from the new choir instrument. 
just came out. So these red keys are letting me choose art articulations. And it looks like it's kind of going random in terms of the vowel selection. But if I most go down the octave, now I can choose the vowel. If you look over at Urban Beats, you can see that they've gotten rid of it and now it's just called Beats. I'm a little bummed about that and the only reason is I used to always show Urban Beats to people who are new to this kind of stuff as like a really neat place to start with some really basic drum beats and they'd automatically sync to the tempo of your song and all that. And so that's gone now and we've got this new folder of Beats. And if I click on these different folders, you can see that we've got a bunch of different kits but it looks like each one of these has the same kit, so abstract, but just kind of treated in a different way. So let's see if we can figure out what the difference is. And it doesn't look like we can, you know, group any of these pads, say, to have hi-hats cut each other off or something like that. That's okay. We do have this button that says Grooves, and if we click on it and then click to the Beats category, and then go to the Abstract Kit, now we can hear some actual little grooves. So I'm going to play one. And then we'll go to the next one. And then what it means is I can also go to a totally different kit and try the grooves out on that one. The nice thing, of course, is that we can just drag and drop the MIDI right onto your project. That's from the color menu. Let's go to distorted and see what the difference is. So same drum kit with some effects. Let me go to flare. So same beat and same kit, but just different kind of effects, I guess. We've got the orchestra, which is also completely redone from the old factory library orchestra, which is great. The old factory library is ancient. I, I'd love somebody in the comments, let me know when the factory library came out. I feel like it was a long time ago. I remember using that when I was, you know, just a wee lad. Not really, but. And this one is by Orchestral Tools, and I've done a video for them. I'll put a link to that in the description. So I think we're just getting a taste of one of their sample libraries in this one, which is cool and sounds great. If we switch it to legato, it'll only let you play one note at a time. So not too bad. If we go to articulations, we can probably use these lower keys to switch those. So really nice spiccato patches in there, and then tremolo. And if we click on the effects, we've got that same effects window we saw before as well as just the, the settings for the patch. Sounding great, but very basic, very bare bones, but enough that you could definitely do something fantastic with this library if that's all you had. And a harp. Flute's always a big one for me. Staccatissimo. Really beautiful sounding flutes, but we don't have control over things like vibrato. So you've got to sustain with vibrato and that's it. And let's just have a look at the snare drum. Marimba, oh, I use marimba all the time. Sounds really good. All right, so last couple of things you can see that are different in the versions. If I go over to World Instrument, you're gonna find those patches mostly in this acoustic folder. So some of the, the patch wording has changed. Most of the instruments are the same, but there are some new ones for sure. Mallet instruments used to be metallophones, and I was worried they got rid of things like the kalimba and the music box, but now if we go over here and switch over to idea phones, that's where we're going to find the kalimba and the music box. This little thumb piano, that's a kalimba right here. And like I said, there are some uh, new ones in here as well. So if we go to reeds, so let's try 
uh, this show and see what this thing's all about. If we go to bowed strings now, we can also see a hurdy-gurdy. Some new synth stuff. Let's actually look at the vintage folder here. And what do we have in here? Is there anything new in there? Synths. There we go, we got something new there. So we got a Juno 106, Korg XD, Odyssey, and a Prophet 6. I love the Junos, I have a Juno 6 in my studio. And lead. Uh, this is where one thing I would probably complain a little bit about. Things like the envelope are so tiny, they still are functional. Set the release to really short. Okay, so we've got some basic synth controls in there. Filter here as well. I click this plus button and so change a bunch of things. So we've got different types of filters. I think that just about covers it for this kind of preview of what's new in the Contact Factory Library 2. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and, uh, you know, what, what you were maybe hoping for. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff under the hood that's different, and so it'll be interesting to find out about those things. But let me know what you think. Hope you found this video useful. And like I said, go watch Low Heat Beats video on Contact 7 because he makes a really sweet little groove with only instruments from Contact 7. And hit that subscribe button and the bell. We'll see you in the next video.